Now, in this particular video, we'll be looking at the relationship between the electricity and magnetism, and that is actually with respect to a moving current as that actually is linked to the magnetic force that is generated in that particular process, respectively. Now, looking at one of the big terms we need to take note of, we need to take note of the four characteristics or the four keynotes that are involved in this particular directing forces in here in quantitative chemistry or physics, I must say. Now, looking at the first particular case scenario or characteristic, we need to take note of the magnitude of the force of the magnetic field. Now, the quantity or the magnitude of the force is directly proportional to the magnitude of the charge which is represented as Q. Now, Q tells us that, oh, if I increase the quantity of charge, then I actually increase the force that is actually generated, or vice versa. If I decrease the force, then that is actually caused by a decrease in the quantity of charge. Now, take note that there is another relationship that also deals with the magnetic force, where the magnitude of the magnetic force is actually directly proportional to the magnitude of the strength of the field, which is the magnetic field represented as B, or some people might call the unit as Tesla. So if I increase the strength of the magnetic field by putting more magnets in this case, the more magnets I put, which generates more magnetic field, then the more force I actually generate with respect to that particular magnet that is being generated. Now, another thing that we need to take note of with respect to the force is that the force which is actually affected by the velocity being directly proportional to the voltage that is being applied, this particular force is actually dependent on the particle's velocity. So if I have a particle, in this case a quantity of charge, either a positive form or a negative form, the velocity of that particular charge in a magnetic field actually tells us more about the dependence of it with respect to the force of the magnet in this particular case. So as a result of what we have over here, what we have is a particular diagram which shows us the relationship between all these quantities in here. In here we have a quantity of charge moving in a specific magnetic field that is actually on the plane of this particular paper and this particular particle is pointing a little bit towards us and now if you look at your x and y and z coordinate in the three dimensions what we realize is that the angle made between the velocity and the magnetic field actually correlates with the force that will be generated in this particular case. Now if I increase the angle, then I have an increase in the force applied. So what do we need to note in here? We need to take note that the magnetic force, which is F, is perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the velocity. Therefore, in this case, we generate a maximum force in this particular process. Now, as we take note that as we increase the angle, we increase the force when the sine of this particular angle is equal to 90 degrees in this particular case, or if I say the angle is equal to 90 degrees, then we have a sine of 90 degrees which is equal to 1. So if you apply that into one of the most interesting equations that relates the force with the quantity of charge with that of the velocity and the magnetic field which is shown as the force which is equal to the quantity or the magnitude of the quantity of magnetic field multiplied by the cross product of the velocity and the magnetic field will actually tell us that this relationship reveals that the velocity and the magnetic field product is multiplied by sine theta and all this is multiplied by the quantity of charge and that equals to force. Now take note that since 
sine in this case to get our maximum force is equal to sine 90 then sine 90 here is equal to 1 multiplied by the velocity times the magnetic field and that is multiplied by the quantity of charge either in this case positive charge will give us the maximum force that is being generated in this particular case now the other thing around is when we have a case where we have our velocity moving parallel to that of the magnetic field and what we see is that either it's actually opposite in direction either away or towards each other what we realize is that we generate a zero force of magnetism in here as a particular case so for in this particular case when the component is zero then we have our velocity to be moving in the parallel direction in the same direction or opposite direction to that of the magnetic field in order for we to generate a zero force in here now in this particular case we need to take note that in all what we've talked about from number one here to number three we realize that hey the charge moving perpendicular to a magnetic field experiences a maximum magnetic force with magnitude in this particular case. Now secondly, we need to take note that the right hand rule for the direction of the magnetic force on a positive charge moving in magnitude field in magnetic field generates a positive force direction in this particular case. On the other side, if we have a charge that is negative, the direction of the force is opposite to that of that given by the right hand rule. So in our right hand rule where we have this for our positive charge where this is actually the force generated and this shows relationship between the velocity and the magnetic field. If it is a negative charge then it is the other way around where we have this to be our magnetic field where this to be our velocity and this pointing down is our force in there. So that's about it for this particular video and let's just add one more thing in here which is what B which represents B is representative of the magnetic field and the magnetic field is equal to the force that is generated divided by the quantity of charge multiplied by the velocity of the particular charged object so this is actually equal to the unit which is equal to one tesla and one tesla which is a equal to 1 t is actually equal to 1 multiplied by newtons over amperes times m over there so that's about it for this video thanks for watching and see you on my next video where we talk more about electricity and magnetism and also some interesting concepts in physics in here thanks for watching be smart and bye